coming to you from our studio at Flamingo Crossings Village. This is the Disney College Program mini-series, part of the Life at Disney podcast. I'm Holly. And I'm Josiah, and I'm super excited for this very first episode of the podcast. Today we're going to be talking to Colin, a current Disney College Program participant. And Taylor, an outreach and engagement manager and program alumna. I'm ready. Are you ready? I am absolutely ready. Let's do it. Well, if you can't tell by the energy in my voice and the twinkle in my eyes, I am super excited for the first ever episode of the Life at Disney podcast, Disney College Program mini series. And I am sitting next to a guy who is full of charisma, full of energy. He spends a lot of time at Disney's Port Orleans Resort, and he's a foot taller than me. So I literally look up to him. Colin, how you doing, buddy? Doing good, how are you? I am fantastic. It's crazy because you and I just had a chance to meet probably about a month ago. Right, yeah. And I said, you know, we'll probably see each other around right. soon. And little did I know, it was right around the corner. Yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Want to jump right in. Uh, tell us about yourself. Tell us about your role and just your background. Uh, yeah, my name is Colin. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, my current role and location, I'm over at Port Orleans Riverside. Uh, my main core role is a concierge. So a lot of like the check-ins, um, really just helping guests out throughout their entire stay, uh, among certain other things. Um, but I've been doing that for about almost nine months now. What made you apply? Uh, I always just grew up with a love for Disney, honestly. It started when my parents took me when I was five months old over to Disney's California Adventure uh, because we were always Disneylanders growing up. And so we would always go with the family every year. And, you know, it went from as a kid, like, yeah, this is Disney, like, this is the magic, all that kind of stuff, to as where I got older, it's like, no, these people are like the magic, and this is what's keeping this whole place running. And learning, like, Walt's backstory, his history, all that kind of stuff really just made me fall in love with it, and it just became my dream. So you're, you're a child, you're going to the parks, you see everything, and then now you come back a little bit older, and you step foot on the property, Walt Disney World Resort, and right. what goes through your mind? What do you actually feel at that point? Honestly, it's just kind of like, you know, your worries, your troubles, all that kind of stuff from, you know, what you want to call like the real world just kind of fades away and you're kind of just focused on having fun, you know, who you're going to get to meet, who you're going to get to see today, yeah. and uh, kind of just looking forward to that day's experience. You brought a little bit of the real world with you on your name tag. You have a college that you represent. Right, Talk yeah. about that. And uh, what do you bring with you? Right. So I go to Phoenix College. Um, I did my one year there because my grandpa went there back when he was in college. Um, and honestly, you know, once I got that semester done, the first thing I wanted to do was apply. So I went ahead and applied. And I think within about a week or so, I ended up hearing back. And I knew I, knew I was already leaving and going to Florida. What are some of those things that you may learn within your major and your courses at school, but that you can bring with you onto the Disney College program. Right, yeah, a lot of it's kind of just how to make people happy and almost just kind of how to address certain situations, whether it's like an issue that they face, maybe whether it's with us at the resort or maybe uh, by chance at the parks or anything like that. But also if they just need basic needs taken care of, how to let people know, the right people to know, um, like what they need, whether it's like maybe they need their bed made, who can I let know that they need this so that we can take care of that situation for them. So as you think about just the Disney College program mm -hmm. as a whole, what is it that makes this such a unique experience? Community and like the feeling of togetherness at whether it's just like Flamingo Crossings or even out in the parks. Um, whether you see that somebody's college or their university is under their name tag, like you automatically know like I can talk to this person and like understand them a bit more. Um, and for a lot of us, like this is my first time living away from my family um, and immediately I was kind of worried about, you know, where am I going to fit in, who am I going to get to meet, all that kind of stuff. And being at Flamingo has made me meet so many new people. Lots of beautiful experiences, lots of moments. What do you think is something, and maybe this is a multi-part answer, but some of those things that you'll take back with you and that you'll always keep with you? Honestly, it's just kind of the memories is a big part of it. Um, you know, working with a lot of my fellow cast members over on, you know, whether it's the resort, um, other resorts that I've gotten the opportunity to work at um, has been really important to me just because, you know, these are people that I'll probably remember for life. Uh, still people I talk to even if they finished their college program months ago. As someone who was very nervous talking to people before, it really helped me ease into casually getting to know people and um, coming out of my shell a little bit. So it's been really nice getting to talk to people, whether it's you know just a simple check-in and seeing where they're from and 
you know, what they're up to with their vacation or they just need someone to talk to. And it's always been really kind of um, good to just be there for them. I could never tell. I mean, it always seems like to me, you're just great with speaking right. and talking <laughs> to people. It just you have that personality. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have such a, a positive aura right. to you. Um, and it seems like this experience has been a, a positive one for you. What are some of the ways that you intentionally try to maximize and make the most of the time that you have here and making the most of your program? You know, no matter how hard the day's been or anything like that, I kind of, you know, remind myself, like, you're at Disney, you're getting to, like, this is what you're here for, this is what you've always wanted. So the fact that I'm getting to leave that dream that most people, you know, always want to, um, the fact that I've gotten to reach my goal at such a young age has still just blown me away. Um, and honestly, just going in every day and looking forward to the people I meet, you know, the experiences I'm gonna have, whether it's with like my cast members, my uh, guests, or, you know, just maybe situations I have to deal with. Maybe I handle the situation really well. That has just kind of been a big part to me, but also, you know, in my off, off days, like, what am I gonna go do today? What am I gonna get to see? Uh, it's kind of nice getting to <clears throat> go in just whenever I feel like it, after making that park reservation, all that kind of stuff, because I don't have to rush to do anything. Or, you know, if I want to, I can just bring a book with me and go sit on a bench and kind of just people watch or maybe just enjoy. Um, because there's a lot of stuff that like, you know, on your average vacation, you're running, you're trying to go do everything and getting to have the experience of just, hey, I feel like going, you know, maybe to Hollywood Studios or anything like that for an hour or so, just to get food or maybe just to go ride my favorite ride or anything like that. Like, that just kind of makes my whole day. Um, and then on the Flamingo side of things, whether it's like getting to hang out on the Great Lawn or getting to go to the pool and that kind of stuff, that's always kind of relaxing to do. Um, my other favorite thing too is like the experiences I've gotten to have, whether it's like backstage tours. So getting to do those has been like crazy for me because I finally get to see like, this is what they've been talking about, like this is it. And then you know, you read about it and you see it on like the TV and that kind of stuff. But when you're breathing that air and you're in that experience, it's like a whole different ballpark. Well, since you kind of dived into it a little bit, let's talk about it with Flamingo Crossings Village, right? What was it like your first moment stepping onto campus and just seeing this pretty new complex? What was it like for you? It was pretty astounding. I mean, like I said, I had never been away from home before. I spent, you know, all that time in Arizona. And coming out here was like just a whole new ballpark. Um, you know, kind of seeing like the breezeway and the two main buildings were really cool, um, especially with like the Sorcerer Mickey buckets and that kind of stuff where it's like, you don't quite think you're at Disney, but you see those little tie-ins and you're like, okay, maybe this isn't like just a regular housing complex. Um, and just getting to walk down the pathways where there's like such nice plants and stuff, because being from Arizona, we had desert everywhere. So like all this greenery and that kind of stuff, like I just really enjoy it. Um, and kind of walking to my apartment, it was, it's hard to describe it because it's kind of like you've never been here before, but you can kind of tell like this is home now. No matter like how much stuff I put in my room, how much I decorate it and that kind of stuff, it's not like the, you know, my stuff that I have that makes it home. It's like the people that I'm with and like my roommates, all that kind of stuff uh, has really made it a much better place to be, I think. Some of the things that we offer here as well, some of the learning offerings and opportunities. Right. Um, what have been some of your favorite that you've attended? Uh, so I think my favorite one that I've attended so far um, was getting to meet the Walt Disney World ambassadors. Mm -hmm. um, they were always kind of ones, you know, being someone who was a big, big like Disney Parks fan, you would see them on like Instagram and like all the social media and stuff and you're like, wow, like they get to like just do it all. And I would of course get like jealous when I saw that like programs would post like, oh look who's here today. And I'm like, I could be meeting them. So finally um, when my roommate was like, hey, they're going to be there. Uh, like I got dressed that morning and I, <laughs> I up and ran for it. And a lot of like the welcome events and that kind of stuff has been really fun to go to. Uh, when I first arrived, it was 90s themed. So we had Chip and Dale in the Rescue Rangers costumes, which was super cool, um, especially because I'm a big Rescue Rangers fan. So like when I saw them, I was like, oh, I was like, this is crazy. Uh, and then also just getting to like go back and like you meet all these people now. Uh, and like I had mentioned, like I know people all over the parks, resorts, all that kind of stuff. And those events are fantastic because like you get to meet people and you're automatically just going to like click with them, whether it's where you're from, what you do, what you're interested in. Um, it really just helps you get to meet people. So that way you don't have to feel like lonely at all. Mm -hmm. Like there's just always somebody around that uh, you can always talk to. So you mentioned the Walt Disney World ambassadors. And I know Rayvon Redding always mentions, you know, you want to network 
vertically, but also horizontally, which is just as important. Um, is that something that you see yourself doing here on the Disney College program? Definitely, yeah. Like um, my leadership team, I think they're fantastic. I love them dearly. Um, and honestly, one of the things about finishing my CP is I'm going to be really sad ending up having to change the location just because I've had such a fantastic time so far. Um, and you know, getting to meet all the people that they know, whether I, you know I'm at a different resort, and they go, oh, like you know whoever, and I'll be like, oh yeah, no, like they're my leader, I love them. Um, that's always kind of cool because then again, you build that connection again. Um, but also just getting to meet like other fellow CPs and stuff like that, whether they've been here as long as I have or they just showed up in January, um, getting to know what their role is like because that's not something I do has just been fascinating to me. Whether it's like attractions, custodial, um, food and beverage, all that kind of stuff, where. I have no idea like how any of that runs. They could outwork me any day in that field. Um, beginning to hear like their experience and what they get to do um, has always been really interesting to me because also you never know where they're going to end up. Uh, they can end up moving up and becoming like a leadership in a whole different area and you could run into them down the road. So having those memories and those connections with people is something really important to me. You're someone who you have a lot of Disney knowledge, Disney experience. This is a big part of your world and part of your life. Right. Um, for the people who, <laughs> honestly, kind of like me, who either they're very new to this experience or they're just watching this, listening to this, and they don't have this knowledge, they don't have this experience, and they're kind of unsure about whether this is the right step for them, uh, what would you tell someone like that? You just got to try it. I mean, honestly, this program is what you make of it. Um, you know, if you're someone like me who wakes up every day and you're excited for whatever you're about to experience and all that kind of stuff, you're going to have the best time of your life. Like, there is not a single day that I would have traded to be back home or anything like that while I've been out here. Um, and I always kind of think of the song from Zootopia, Try Everything, where it's like doing all of these different experiences and that kind of stuff. Like, you're never going to know what you're going to want to do or what you may be into unless you actually make that jump and just try it. Um, so that's like my biggest piece of advice that I could do is just go ahead and give it a shot if it's not what you expected it to be. You know, you can say you did it and you still have those experiences, those friends and those memories that you've gotten to um, partake in while you've been out here. And if you end up being someone like me where you're like, I found my place and I found my home, you're set. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, I want to shift gears a little bit. Um, Disney's Port Orleans Resort. Riverside, right. I believe it is true that you have transitioned into a role as a trainer. Uh, what is that like? Um, it's probably been one of the most honoring and humbling experiences of my program so far. Um, when my leadership team realized that I was going to be here to June, they gave me the offer of becoming a trainer and kind of just moving up. Um, so the fact that they wanted to uh, entrust me with that and believed in me uh, and especially supported me through all that kind of stuff meant the world to me. Um, just because, you know, it's essentially saying we trust in you to take these, you know, whether it's new CPs or new cast members who are transferring to that location, we're putting them in your hands and you're going to be shaping this experience for them. So depending on how well I do, which is hopefully good, um, you know, they could be the best at their job. Um, they could have, you know, that cheery outlook that I like to keep, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, of course, getting to work with my fellow trainers um, and kind of coordinating on, you know, teaching them how we maybe prefer to do things is really important, too. Because um, I always tell my trainees, I'm like, you know, I may teach you this one thing and this other training uh, may teach you another thing. But, you know, at the end of the day, I want you to take the best parts of us and make it your own and become better than both of us in the end. Because that's what our job is, is to either make you as good as or better than us. So that way, you know, not only that you can succeed, but so that our uh, area and like our resort can succeed in that way and helping our guests and bettering their experience. So if someone is interested in kind of climbing the way that you have, what does it actually look like to, to build that trust and, and that leadership and to have those skills um, in a space like that? Right. I mean, the big thing is just working hard, um, you know, whether it's, you know, because everyone's going to make mistakes, right? When I first started, um, you know, I made a ton of mistakes, but working with whether it's my coworkers, my supervisors, or even my leaders or anyone like that, um, and kind of going to them for advice, maybe it being like, hey, you know, I'm not very comfortable in doing this. What's a better way to do it? Or if I'm doing something that may, they may not like, what's the way that I can um, redo this and make it work better for um, everybody else? That's a big thing to it, um, as well as just being as pop, you know as helpful as you can be. For me, it's not hard because that's what I love to do. Um, but you know, when the, whenever they ask you, like, "Hey, can you do this for me?" or do that kind of stuff, 
just do it because you doing it shows them like, hey, I'm willing to work hard and that kind of stuff um, and put in that effort uh, to move forward and really just show that your aspirations are up there and that you're truly climbing up to them. Are there any other challenges that you faced while on the Disney College program and how did you find a way to overcome them? So when I first became a trainer, a lot of people were very skeptical. People were a little hesitant, especially because, uh, you know, I'm so young compared to a lot of mostly cast members. Uh, but, you know, I, my leadership stuck with me and I'm, you know, honored and, you know, very happy that they did. Um, but knowing that I had their support just made it so much easier. Like I just had a trainee um, tell me like she was super skeptical uh, about when she found out I was the only CP trainer and I was training her for most of her days. Um, but she ended up coming back to me at the end and it actually made me tear up and she was like, you know, you did a phenomenal job. Like this is much better than I thought it was going to be and you really made me feel comfortable in the workplace. Um, and I also like to do room tours and that kind of stuff. And she's like, you really helped me stay informed on the resort. Uh, and I really appreciated all like the hard work and effort you put into me because you know your trainee is brand new and they're looking to you for like what do I do how do I do it um, you know if we have an upset guest how do I handle this situation it can be super daunting I know it was for me mm -hmm. um, but supporting them and giving them you know every last bit of effort even if you're drained at the end of the day or you've been having a hard time um, making them succeed in the end makes it all worth it. So as you take a look at this full experience, uh, this incredible Disney College program experience, this is where you are right now. Right. You've talked about where you want to go. What does it mean to you to see the road ahead? You know, a big thing with the Walt Disney Company is like you have to try everything to find out what you want. Um, but being fortunate enough like me to um, be in the concierge position where I'm helping people and it makes me feel so good every day just to be there. Um, has kind of shown me like this is where I want to be. You know, I talked to like the Disney recruiters and they've been super helpful with me. Um, and even though it's still a little nerve wracking, not knowing where I'll be or what I'll be doing, um, it's kind of exciting because you don't know what new experiences you're going to get, who you're going to get to meet, um, what you're going to be doing is a big part of it. Um, so kind of having that positive outlook on it makes it a lot easier. But now that I'm the person who gets to see that kid who, you know, they've been looking forward to this, or this is their one, their one trip in their whole lifetime, and getting to make sure that every moment is memorable for them, um, making sure that they you know, are truly feeling like the magic and that kind of stuff of the parks, um, makes it all worth it at the end of the day. Um, and personally, you know, it's just so fulfilling and feels good that I couldn't see myself being anywhere else. Well, I think at this point, all of us are incredibly excited to see what's in your future and what's next for you. So thank you for thank hanging you. out with us and sharing a little bit about your Disney College program experience. We're looking forward to hearing more from you. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Well, don't go anywhere just yet. We're just getting started here at the Life at Disney podcast. You're about to hear from Holly, who is speaking to a Disney College program alum and someone who is in outreach and engagement. Her name is Taylor. She's one of my good friends, and I'm so excited for you to hear from her. Holly, take it away. Thanks, Josiah. We are excited to continue this first episode of the Life at Disney podcast Disney College program miniseries. This portion of the episode will feature a Disney College program alum doing big things at the Walt Disney Company. After completing her program, Taylor went on to work with ESPN 30 for 30 films and podcasts before landing her current role as an outreach and engagement manager supporting Disney on the Yard, which is the Walt Disney Company's initiative dedicated to building a community for HBCU alumni and providing meaningful opportunities for students. Her current role even allows her to stay connected to the Disney College program through the Disney College program HBCU cohort powered by Disney on the Yard. So welcome to the show, Taylor Barfield. We are so excited to have you. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me, Holly. I'm doing really great. I'm so happy to be here and share some of the things that helped me along my career. <laughs> oh my gosh, well, we're so excited to have you. And I have to say, like your Tiana and your Disney on the yard, your HBCU stuff in the background is so cute. I'm like obsessed with that and distracted Thanks. right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're going to start with something really easy. Just tell us about yourself. What do you do right now? What is your current role? Um, just give us the rundown. Absolutely. So I am Taylor. I am an outreach and engagement manager supporting Disney on the Yard. And what that means is that I get to go out and develop programming and opportunities for HBCU alumni like myself. 
Um, we get to connect people to the Walt Disney Company through various internships, scholarships, and mentorship. And one of the things that I also do is develop programming internally for those mentorship communities. So a lot of the different partnerships that we have, I get the great opportunity to have development sessions for them and do a lot of our internal programming for those people. And I mean, obviously, you know, we've gotten to work together a little bit and it's just so cool, all the work that you're doing and just the way that you're able to have that impact on these students, I'm sure it's just very rewarding. Absolutely. It's heartwarming work. I always love to say we have this saying in our area where we change lives. And I really do feel like that every day. You're in a Disney College program alum. When was your Disney College program? And then like, how did you hear about it? What made you want to apply? So I did my Disney College program in spring 2015. The way that I found out about the Disney College program is actually kind of an accident, but a happy accident. I'm someone who loves to read name tags and I'm always gonna address you by name. So if I see you and you have Holly on your name tag, I'm gonna say, hi, Holly. A lot of times that makes people go like, do I know you? But of course, Disney, we wear our name tags. But I was going to the parks for my birthday at the time and I was doing my normal hi, how are you is for people. And I realized that a lot of people had hometowns, but some people had colleges. So I finally just asked someone, like, why do you have a college as opposed to a you know place? And they told me about the Disney College program, which was just, that was the catalyst moment right there. I remember I was at Rock and Roller Coaster, which is in Disney's Hollywood Studios. And I just immediately started researching how I could apply, when I could apply, and what that would look like for me. And the rest is really history. It's been just amazing since then. What school did you represent? I know you talked about talking with CP on when you were like in the parks and you saw the name or you saw their name tag and you saw their school. What was your school? And then what was your major in school? When I did the Disney College program, I hailed from the illustrious Bowie State University. And there's no other way to say that, of course. <laughs> but Bowie State University was my home school at the time. Um, I was pursuing my undergraduate degree in communications with a concentration in emerging media technology. So I, I knew I was in my senior year, actually, and I was just really excited. But I, I knew that this opportunity would be something that could really change my life. And I wanted to go for something creative. And that was the uh, that was the path for me. I wanted to be able to make magic. And it was just an amazing experience. That's awesome. I feel like everyone's so willing to talk about it, too, like so excited to share how they got there. Everyone has a Disney story that they're excited to share. So once you were on the college program, what was your role and where were you located? When I was in the college program, I was a photo pass photographer in Magic Kingdom. So I got to be with 50,000 of my closest friends every single day. It was a really fun experience. I spent a lot of time working on Main Street, but I did also have the opportunity to work in all four of the major theme parks in Orlando. So it was a great experience and I, I just loved it. I, that was part of my bucket list and it was just really cool to get to work in every area. So for people listening who might not know what PhotoPass does, what did like a day in the life of a PhotoPass photographer look like? PhotoPass photographers are the people that you get to ask for a photo when you're walking around the parks or when you're with characters, you get to have your photo taken by those uh, PhotoPass photographers. If you're with Tinkerbell, then we are your Flutterbug or Shutterbug. Um, it was just a really fun, unique opportunity, and I got to capture the magic as people were on their family vacations at Walt Disney World Resort. And I imagine you just get to meet so many people doing that because everyone wants their photo taken. Absolutely. I got to meet people, and the, one of the cooler things was that I got to see people again throughout their visits. So that became a fun game to play while you were a photo pass photographer. <laughs> Were there any lessons you learned or skills you gained from your program that you still use today in your current role? When I started on the Disney College program, we started with a class called Traditions. And I love to tell people that Traditions truly did change my life. Traditions is where you learn about the history of the Walt Disney Company and the history of Disney Parks and every experience that led up to the moment that, we're, that, that you're sitting in that room to become the next cast member. But one of the things our traditions facilitator told us was that you need to treat everyone like it's their first time coming to the parks or their last time coming to the parks. I had a family come in one day and they were visiting with their father for their last trip. And 
I was just like, how can I make this experience worthwhile for them? And one of the things that we were able to do was get a special meet and greet with some of the characters that he really wanted to meet. And just seeing the looks on their family's faces really just is going to stay with me forever. So getting a, being, being able to have those opportunities to create those moments and then have those moments stick with me, I just, I couldn't trade it for the world. And those types of things of, of how you treat people really just stuck with me. And I, I, look, I look to that in everything I do. I love what you said about treating everyone as if it's their first visit or their last visit, because when you're on the college program or just working in the parks or working for the Walt Disney Company, like in your current role, you know, it really speaks to the magic that you get to make and the impact that you get to have. Like this is a company where, you know, everyone has kind of this personal connection to it. It's just a common thing. And it really puts it into perspective. Like, wow, this is like, I can't believe I get to do this. It's very unique to Disney. It is very unique. And having that experience really kind of drives why I love the work that we do on our team, because if I can help someone have a similar experience in any of the roles that I've had here at Disney, I want to make sure that I do that. So it's really fun to be on the outreach and engagement team and connect people with these opportunities, just like we're talking about today. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so college program. It's a fun time. Lots of unique moments, lots of really just special, uniquely Disney experiences you get to have. So you have to have a favorite memory and it might be hard to pick one, but I'm going to ask you, do you have a favorite memory from the program? Well, I will say getting to watch Wishes every night was a memory of mine because Wishes no longer exists. And I have a Pandora charm that has wishes on it. So I am all about wishes. But my friends and I drove down from my hometown in Maryland and we saw it the last show. So wishes was truly a great experience. And I still remember all of the music that went along with that show and how, how it went. <laughs> I think fireworks shows are just like, they're always going to hit home. What about your program made the experience beneficial for you? Whether that was maybe people you met or like lessons you learned, skills you gained that helped you today? Like, what do you feel like you walked away from the program with that was like really, really beneficial to you? So walking away from the program, I learned a ton about myself. I learned a ton about my, we, we also had roommates. So I learned a ton about my roommates and how to just live in a space with so many different personalities. We're all working towards the same goals. But also I learned a lot about functional skills that I actually apply still to work today. So thinking about my role as a photo pass photographer, I would have to manage my line. I would have to, um, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of your own business in a sense. There is a level of product project management or production management as you're preparing. So you'll, you'll see that, yes, I've worked at like ESPN and different things like that. But I think about the fact that I'm having to move initiatives forward, keeping those themes of making sure that guest service is top tier, safety is the most important thing in all things that we do. I'm planning events and I'm thinking of things in that way. Like so many things are applicable um, across the board. At Disney, we also had the five keys. So we had safety, courtesy, inclusion, show, and efficiency. And when you use that as a framework for how you work in your work, you're able to see how great and great of an impact that you'll have on some of the initiatives you'll work for, whether you're working at a large bank or you're working at the federal government, wherever you're working, you'll see if you learn those five keys how they're applicable in your, your everyday work life. That's actually um, a really great segue into what I want to talk about next, which is your current role. So when you were kind of going through that transition, coming back to Disney, like what did that path look like for you? What was that journey? And then did you have any career highlights? Again, like those pinch me moments where you're like, oh my gosh, like this is my life. I get to work for Disney. I've had so many pinch me moments while working for Disney. While I was working for ESPN Films, for example, our team won an Oscar. So that was just a phenomenal experience. I actually have photos holding our real Oscar and everything. I don't personally have one, but our team did have one, which was just a great experience. Um, I had so many just 
cool bunch of me moments just like that between the people that I had the opportunity to meet or interview as part of my role at ESPN. It was just a great, phenomenal experience. And then even with this role, we were able to host an activation called HBCU Week as the outreach and engagement team. And that was powered by Disney on the Yard down at Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. And we had over 8,000 students come in and get their on the spot college acceptances to HBCUs from across the nation. That was definitely a pinch me moment because that was something, an initiative that I saw grow from just an idea to 8,000 people coming in to get accepted for college and going to HBCUs at Disney. <laughs> when you when you have all of those different things that are a part of you coming together that way, you, you can't help but to pinch yourself. So I've had just so many, so many moments like that here at Disney. And that's one thing that I always just love about our company and the work that we do here, especially on the outreach and engagement team. So can you do a little bit of a deeper dive into your current role with the outreach and engagement team, and then also a deeper dive into Disney on the Yard? Like, what is that? The HBCU cohort is something that affects me personally. My experience informs a lot of the things that I'm able to assist or provide this group with. There are over 100 HBCUs around the nation, and what our programming allows for us to do is showcase the Walt Disney Company as an employer of choice. I'll go to different career talks with a lot of different communities from a, a variety of demographics, but and I'll ask, like, do you know that Nat Geo is owned by the Walt Disney Company? Did you know Hulu is owned by the Walt Disney Company? Did you know that a lot of those shows that you've grown up loving and knowing our Disney shows. Did you know that ABC and I can go on and on and on, but they don't know. And being able to share the knowledge about what the company looks like and how, how they can see themselves in roles at Disney really is just the way that we're able to connect people. Because once that light bulb kind of goes off and you're able to say, I would love to be able to be a documentarian for National Geographic, and I know that I can do this through a role at Disney or I can start this opportunity uh, or start this path to this opportunity through the Disney College program. You're more empowered to do that. You understand kind of what your roadmap looks like. And that's one of the things that we want to help you be able to do. Yeah. Uh, so, OK, so you're really busy. You're doing these career talks. You are doing all of this outreach with HBCUs. Um, what are some highlights from supporting this business so far? One of the biggest highlights that I have as part of my role on the outreach and engagement team as an outreach and engagement manager is seeing the Disney College program HBCU cohort powered by Disney on the Yard come to life. Being able to see this cohort grow from just an idea on our team and be able to grow into something that's a true initiative that's connecting people with their first role at Disney has been an amazing experience. One of the things that I do to support the initiative is develop their programming and mentorship opportunities in partnership with our Disney programs team and, of course, our Disney recruitment teams. So it's just a great experience because I know that I, too, was someone who did the Disney College program and had no idea what the future could hold for me. Being able to connect the participants with opportunities that they would enjoy as well is just something that's near and dear to my heart. I love to see their faces light up and I love to hear about some of their dreams because I know that it's possible. I'm someone who got to pursue my dreams with Disney and I know that it's, it's possible for them as well. I love that. And it just it's so cool that you have this personal connection to the work that you do. And it is kind of, I would imagine, a full circle moment where you went from being a Disney College program participant to an alum, and now you're like working with these students, these participants. Um, I'm just curious to know more, like what is that personal connection? Like, what is that like for you? The HBCU cohort is something that's very, very personal to me because I am someone who is an HBCU alum. My experiences inform how I'm able to support them on their college program. And one of the things that I get to do is create meaningful engagements for them to be able to develop their networks here at the Walt Disney Company. They're starting on their first roles. A lot of them might have ideas for what they want to do, but they just don't know how to get there. And developing their network is the first place to start. So having those opportunities for mentorship and then 
uh, Black Talent Network panels with some of our Berg partners and different initiatives that are internal to Disney allows them to be able to connect with some of the people that can help them develop their career roadmap as well. Okay, last question for you. What advice do you have for HBCU students who might be interested in working at the Walt Disney Company? If you are an HBCU student and you're looking to work at the Walt Disney Company, my first suggestion for you would be to visit DisneyOnTheArt.com and sign up for our email center where you're able to hear about some of our events, activations, and career programming that might be of interest to you. There are so many roles at the Walt Disney Company, and all you have to do is put yourself in the room where you're able to hear about the role that might be the most impactful for you. I love to tell people that you can start off in animal sciences and become a patent attorney at the Walt Disney Company if that's what you want to do. So it's just about making sure that you're there and you're present because we'll be we'll be able to connect those dots for you and you'll be able to find yourself in a role at Disney. So definitely stay engaged with our social media at Disney on the Yard on Instagram and follow us by staying connected through DisneyOnTheYard.com and signing up for our email center. Taylor, thank you so much for sharing more about your experience and your favorite memories that was so fun to hear about. And then just the way that you're able to engage with the college program now in your current role. It was just so, so great to hear from you. So thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful for this opportunity and to share some of the great work we do here at Disney.